Hey guys, it's Kristen with the Creep Society Podcast, and we have a very special Valentine's Day episode for you all. Uh, I'm very excited to have two of my favorites on, and we have uh, Darlene Bowsen from and Clint Sears from the experiences, shall I say, the tension experience and the lesson experience. So thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we are really excited to have this. I mean, obviously, we've been talking about this nonstop for a long time, and we're, what, almost two years in now? So <laughs> it's it exciting. It feels like five. <laughs> yeah, I think it's two. <laughs> it does. I mean, it's been a long time, but we've gone through a lot, so I'm super excited. Um, so I guess the first thing that I always ask, and we'll ask you again just to clarify, for a lot of um, our listeners, especially a lot of our listeners, aren't really used to uh, or know what immersive theater is. How would you explain the experiences to them real quick? Um, I, experience or I guess immersive theater in general is any time that the audience has a role in the has a role in the actual narrative that we're trying to tell. If you guys hear something in the background screaming bloody murder, yeah. that would be my son. Uh, <laughs> Really no, don't worry. I have a. But I'm a, gonna put you on mute, and you answer that while I deal with this. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's fine. Darren often uses his child for audio cues for the movie, so he'll actually poke him with sticks just to get the, the perfect sound. <laughs> no, that's um, amazing. Uh, okay, so immersive. Yeah, I, we think that immersive is the medium that will take over everything. We think it's the next thing, and we believe that because. Um, nothing quite grabs you as much as immersive does. And I think everyone is getting a little too passive with all the other stuff that we have. I saw this story about when I was in college, I was in a radio and TV class, and the professor brought up the fact that when we first had radio, everyone would sit around and not do anything else, and they would listen to these radio shows or, or speeches or whatever was on, and you actively sat and just all you were doing was listening to the radio. And then it became TV, and the fact the fact that anyone would just have the TV on in the background was still kind of strange even in the 90s, right? But now we all do it. We have TV on just to fill the room. But with immersion, you can't do that. And I think a lot of people are waking up to that. And the ARG and all the other things hold the audience's attention like nothing else. And I think that's why they're going to be so attractive going forward. It's, it's... I think as well, I, mean, I think as well, everything that, that Clint said, but... Yeah, most entertainment happens without you. Um, most entertainment can continue without you. A movie starts and a movie ends whether you watch it or not. A play can start and end whether you're sitting in the audience or not. This does not. This requires you to actually uh, be unlocked and viewed. Definitely. And um, I guess me speaking as a participant versus a creator, I've yet to feel anything that even comes close to what I feel whenever I'm inside those walls. So I know I talk about it so much, but that's because it is something that I really wish everyone could experience. It's definitely something completely different and you'll never feel the same way once you're out of it. Like I'm pretty sure you ruined a lot of a lot of um, pastimes for me now. Like even when I go to certain movies, I'm like, oh, this is all right. Or even if I go to Haunted House, I'm like, whatever. You know, it doesn't even remotely come close. So I, I completely that, understand that. That is our goal. And that's what we always say is how can we ruin the rest of Kristen's time? So I'm glad that's, <laughs> that's firing for us. I mean, and, uh, we're going uh, good. For, for me, just talk about, about feelings when you watch entertainment or do entertainment. It used to be that I could have an experience watching a TV show or a movie um, where you could actually sit in a theater and have a experience. And it used to be seriously a religious experience. I remember the first time I saw Amelie in the theaters, it was a magical experience because I was not distracted. I was able to partake and engul be, be engulfed in this um, and imagery and characters. Now there's so much going on and our attention spans are so short that even when you go see a movie now, there's a thousand other things going on. Uh, and that's if you can actually make it to a movie theater. I mean, entertainment has become so, um, I, I guess, so serviceable that you can, you can get it on a cell phone driving. You can get it, uh, you know, on an iPad at the gym. You can get it on a podcast as you walk around hiking. That at this point now, it's hard to actually get someone's full attention and time only doing that. 
Um, you know, I'm listening to a podcast series right now, and I'm doing 50 other things as I'm listening to it. So while I'm listening, I'm not truly really there. I'm doing 10 other things while trying to, you know, engulf myself or immerse myself in this thing. I, I think for, for us, our hope is, is that we do ruin lives because you are, <laughs> you are uh, completely inside this, uh, you know, this mystery, and you could do that. Definitely. And I, I always try to explain it to people who ask me. I always say something real simple like, okay, imagine you go see an Alice in Wonderland play, but instead of sitting down and watching it, you know, you're able to walk around, you can, you know, touch things. Uh, people, I mean, the actors can touch you, you know, different things like that. And people's minds are blown most of the time whenever I talk about this. Um, so I really hope that this kind of explodes and I hope that it goes somewhere, especially for you too, because I mean, I obviously am obsessed with all of this and all the experiences it brought me. And I think that I, well, I guess I wish that more people, you know, would would really open their minds a little bit and, and do something like this. I, I think it's coming. I think that's a good thing. And, that, and, and what you just described is when you have to explain it to people, that's... That's part of what we're up against now is every time we pitch somewhere, we, every time somebody's talking about it, anyone, all the, all the people involved, you have to burn so many calories explaining what it is, but <laughs> it, it's all changing, and immersive is like the buzzword in the culture right now, so I think it's happening, and you know, we got Star Wars coming, we've got things coming, so... Yeah, I think I think it's going to happen. Yeah, it's going to be great. Um, so I guess that brings me real quick to our, I guess the first portion real quick, which was tension, obviously, the tension experience. Um, my biggest question is now reflecting back on that, especially like the ARG portion and the event that was so special, which was Ascension. Um, do you feel like you would do anything different or change anything? No, I mean, I, I think that everything that had to happen in tension had to happen in that way. Um, for not only, this is such the Wild West, um, and I think that we're all trying to figure it out, and we're all trying to learn. Um, and I think that, that that was what Ascension had to be, was us learning and figuring things out. Yeah. Because uh, it, it is so new. I mean, there, yes, there have been people that have been doing immersive theater for a long period of time, but I think that with technology now and with the age of the Internet now, it, it's a constantly changing landscape. So... It was a crash course for us. I think it was an educational course for us. Definitely. And yeah. it's crazy that you all did it so, I feel, so successfully. Like, it was such a big production. And the ARG is still, I can't, it still blows my mind to this day. Um, the fact that it was just you two, I cannot get over that to save my life. Um, well, at we, all. We, 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 have, we have help. We definitely, we definitely have help. But care for ours. Yeah. <laughs> um. So how did, I mean, we have talked about tension before, so I guess we can jump real quick. How did lust come about? How did you all decide the theme or what it would be? Was it already planned or was it more of planned after tension? Um, it came about because Darren can't rest or take time off. <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing it. And I said, no, he said, we're doing it. And I said, no, he said, we're doing it. And I said, no. And then finally we did <laughs> But yeah, um, Darren filled that one. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I, I don't even know where to go. Because, I mean, how long? We're already coming up to, what, a year doing the ARG portion of Lust, which is insane. It's uh, so much information, uh, so much time that everyone spends, especially you guys, I can imagine, uh, dedicating to this storyline and this plot. And... Um, do you feel, like, I, I guess what I want to say is how do you feel towards the community of the people that have been doing this and that dedicate time to this? It's a double-edged sword, I think, for Clint and I. Um, there, is, there is so much that goes on that, that no one sees. And mm -hmm. I think that that's kind of exciting as well because if we do our jobs correctly and the people that we work for us job correctly, then, then you, <laughs> won't see, um, you won't see all these things that we have to do. Uh, it, it is it is frustrating because what might appear as a, a you know a brief interaction at a bar that you know is is talked about in two sentences uh, on a message board post or a Slack thing might have taken us you know five days of planning and putting together. Um, one of the things that I've tried to be very cognizant about is to protect the people 
um, not only the people that are, that are doing the event, but the people that we are honestly answering to. And so that means that there, there can't be exposure. And exposure means um, giving the illusion that there's constant danger if there really isn't. Um, crossing streets, for example, uh, <laughs> definitely, or, or having a periscope that may appear that something's being done that, that is um, that we're out of control, that we're not. And, and so that, that means coordinating with things that there's a lot of bureaucracy and red tape. So, for example, if we need help from the LAPD or we need permits uh, because we're going to be on a sidewalk or we need insurance because we're putting people in a car, these are all things that, you know, as a creator and as someone that loves to tell stories, uh, it, it, it's a real fucking bummer. Um, because, you know, I'm just going to give you an example of something. So you get in a car. Let's just talk about lust as, 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 as a kind of barometer of this. So there's an experience, and in that experience, there is a building. Well, you have to have a, an insurance policy in that building. But then there's alcohol being served in that building, so that means there has to be an insurance policy on top of that insurance policy. And then there's going to be a, a two-block ride uh, just to, to shuttle you from your car to this place. Well, that's a third insurance policy. Uh and those three insurance policies need a fourth insurance policy, so they all work together. And so that that type of that type of uh, wheel spinning and, and paper, you know, using just dotting eyes and crossing T's, that that literally can take eight or nine hours out of the day that never is seen. Um, and I think to me that's the most frustrating part is by the time we actually get to the fun part, the part that you know that, that Clint and I are the most excited about, we've spent eight hours of our day doing something else that no one will ever see. And uh, you know that. So it's been this really kind of hard time this time because, again, there, there is such a few people um, that are trying to put these things together and we're trying to do everything on the up and up and in the right way to, again, protect the, the participants and, and our investors uh, that sometimes we get so bogged down in the technical that we forget about this, what, what actually is happening, how the story is affecting people, both in good and bad. Meaning, I love when people get upset and, and get enraged because that means that we're doing something. That means that we're striking a chord or that we're, you know, causing an emotion. And that's what this whole thing was about: was trying to log emo uh, trying to um, get people to have emotions. Definitely. And I mean, I know I always come across, maybe it's like a kiss ass, but I always defend you two to the death because I can't even imagine uh, how much time and sacrifice and just cost wise that it takes to do something like this. And I think a lot of the times we don't get a chance to tell you thank you and that we appreciate you so much from the community because of this. And um, I think that's really important for me to, to let you to know that, you know, we really, we really do appreciate this. It's really something special and really something important to a lot of us. And um, I think I'm glad that you made that comment because I think that is something that needs to be said. Um, there should be some more appreciation across the board um, well, because I can't even imagine. I, I don't want to sound like it. it's not even about the appreciation. I, I love, I think Clint and I both love what we do. You, you know, it comes down from a, it's exhausting. And I yeah. think I wish, and the, the hope is, and this is what I think Clint and I's dream is, is there will come a time very soon that we're only worried about the creative and yes. we're only worried about the narrative and the stories and we're not worried about permits, building and safety and fire marshals and LAPD officers. That's the day that I think Clint and I both aspire to get to is where we're only worried about uh, all the abbreviations that we're, we're juggling at really? the time. That's awesome. Um, and that makes me super happy to hear. Um, so real quick, uh, did you both have a favorite moment this year so far from the ARG portion? You know, I really liked, uh, I liked Noah's seminar and that was, uh, that was pretty great. I enjoyed the hell out of that. Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, it's hard because there's been so much that yeah. <laughs> our brains are fried usually every day. <laughs> you know what? I mean, I, I think my favorite this is my favorite, uh, I guess part of the whole ARG. Um, we plant, Clint and I try to go out uh, and plant a thousand seeds. And we give seeds to different people. However, it is up to the seed that, that's been handed to someone if it's planted and if it grows. And what, what I mean by that is, is that we'll start off and there'll be a thousand ideas. And we'll say, these are the thousand ideas. And those seeds get, get thrown out within the community. And 
depending on if that person takes the seed and they water it, will determine if that storyline grows. And so you'll see throughout the, the course of the year, storylines fall apart and they, they just nothing ever happens with them. And that it, a lot of it, or other storylines, this all of a sudden flourish and become these things. You know, if you water a seed long enough, someone gets on a plane and shows up at your door. Uh, that that's based not on I, not on uh, you know plain favorites or what awesome ideas that Clint and I have. It comes down to who is watering the seed. And so I think what's exciting for Clint and I is is it is a constant game of watching, and we literally are, are watching, uh, unsure of where it's going to go. And it's based on how people react to certain storylines. So, for, for example, you might be handed a seed, and you could look at it and say, oh, this is kind of stupid and don't talk about it, and, and that seed will die and that storyline will die. Or you can obsess on it, and you can uh, you know, look at it, and you can water it, and you can sing it songs. And the more you do with it, I think the more that storyline grows and flourishes. Um, and it's also kind of a double – going back to the double-edged sword, it's also sad because there are storylines that I think Clint and I are really excited about and nothing ever happens with them. And so we have to be able to walk away, you know, be able to say, oh, that sucks, but you know, that, that particular storyline did, didn't take. I think sometimes uh, as a community too, I know sometimes we overthink and I think that's a, a big part of our downfall. <laughs> uh, a lot of times we uh, jump really quick or we're like, should we have done this? Or was this right? Or I'm always teasing everyone. Like, I'm like, we fucked it up. Like we can't do anything right. Uh, we miss this. But I do know uh, event wise, I personally, for me, uh, Mason being sent to Megan's house fucked my head up so bad. But again, that's a fun one to talk about. Yes. Mason wasn't sent to her house. It, it, that she did that. I mean, and yeah. I, what I mean, what I mean is that uh, that didn't happen uh, overnight. That wasn't. That was a long, long um, gardening of, of her. <laughs> that that basically I talk about overanalyzing. I mean, I can't. You know, to, to Megan's credit, and I think her uh, constant overthinking led to that her, her emails and her thoughts and her essays and her Facebook and, posts and, what, and, her, and what she ultimately needed and wanted and definitely and she was like you know there was a moment where like all right that's it and it was easy to <laughs> well and i think you know this is the thing you talk about uh and i'm trying to think how to even how to, how to say this i i have to carefully word word things um megan was responsible for her own um her own fate in this. Uh, Brian Bishop, uh, some of the things that's happened to him are, he is responsible for that. And I think that, you know, we start out every chapter with, you know, 10, 10 ideas, 10 storylines. Uh, we might only see three of them, two or three of them based on, you know, again, those people that become obsessed and, and take over and start to overanalyze. And I think, uh, I'm going to back out of this. I can't answer this question. <laughs> no, no, no. You're good. There's so much I want to say, but I can't. <laughs> seeds, seeds and gardens. That's There that's you go. Right. That's good. Um, I just, I know it affected me because I feel like I always have this like, oh, I'm fine. I don't live there. So I'm in my little bubble. And then seeing no that, bubble. I know, I learned that real quick. <laughs> um, I was just like, nobody's safe. Holy shit. Like, that's insane. And either way, I thought it was uh, one of the coolest parts, definitely for me, uh, because even though it wasn't, it wasn't directed towards me, it affected me still. So I think that was uh, really cool, actually. Um, so think, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and hopefully no matter you know, there's all the threads, there's all the seeds, there's all the things that are happening. And no matter what's happening or who is, who basically has the ball, I'm just going to layer metaphors on top of metaphors. <laughs> there's hopefully it's at least interesting enough that you want to find out what happens next. Even if you're not fully in it at that moment, you know that your time is going to come and it's at least going to be interesting to watch what happens to the person and how they're, how they're taking the narrative bouncing off of it. Definitely. Definitely. And I think you all do very well at that. So, <laughs> um, yay. yay. Um, so I definitely want to start talking about the events, um, because holy shit, um, that one was really fun. <laughs> um, so how did you decide to do, or I guess what led to like an actual mid season? Um, uh, <laughs> talk about the idea of, I, I 
before doing tension, I used to have hair, and I, I wasn't gray. And <laughs> I have now have a massive receding hairline completely gray due to the stress of, again, those things that go by unseen. And the, this, the, one was, I th- this one was harder than tension, honestly. 100%. I can imagine. For, uh, for four days, it was, I mean, I'll give you an example. Uh, seven different locations that they wanted to have this. Um, we kind of get a mandate of where to put these things, and it's it's fucking it's ridiculous. But we were told basically where they have to go, and then we have to figure that out. Um, every single place we could not get permits for, and we started out, I want to say, six months in advance, five months in advance, and the, the bureaucracy, the, the, bureauc- the bureaucracy in place was so insane and so crazy and you have to wait and so like let's say that i fill a permit out i'm like i want to do it here you might have to wait 10 days to get an answer and you're going to pay for each of these so you know you 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 send money in and you're like here's where i want to do it and then 10 days later you get told no you can't do it we ended up switching the location five or six days before we actually had it um based on just every place coming back and you got to think about this there's there's 40 some actors in there and there are 40 some storylines going on and the choreography of these storylines not intersecting and not that that, that's based on a location and this location was changing every day every single day so Um, much is tied to the location because the the threads run through it the story runs through it and you frank you need to rehearse in the location and so yeah I, I can't even imagine. Um, see, again, really stuff like <laughs> blows my mind. Um, I can't. So, um, how... I will, tell you a fun sto- I will tell you a fun story. Mm-hmm. That really that yes. I, don't, I don't think I said anywhere before. So, when you walk into uh, Lust, one of the first things you kind of see is there's a, a, a two characters or people that they're drugs and there are bags of cocaine. And as you walk into into it, you'll find drugs kind of lying everywhere and cocaine everywhere. Uh, we're 30 minutes before the first group of people arrive and LAPD shows up and three oh. officers walk in. Oh God. And as they walk in, there's nudity abound and there's cocaine baggies everywhere. And, uh, they, they walk in and they kind of look around and they say, someone's having a party. Oh my and, God. Uh, I was like, well, this is it. This is it. We're getting shut down. This is, this is the end. But uh, I, luckily it was, it was not. I personally keistered about five kilos myself. And, uh, yeah. I feel like I saved the show doing it, so I'm not embarrassed. So, hey, there One you go. One of those perks of having friends in high places that can get us out of situations like this, but it was, uh, it was, it was nerve-wracking, definitely, for <laughs> a few minutes. That's wild, and I always think about that. I mean, especially when I leave, I'm always like, how did they pull it off? Like, how can you do – how do you even begin to put this together? Um, how does it even operate? And I think that's I, – I can't even imagine what that's like. <laughs> Um, so what are, I guess, I'm not sure. And if I, if we can't answer this, you can let me know. What are some of the things that we missed is, I guess I, my biggest question was with Ascension, I did feel like it was very much, uh, definitely like choose your own adventure. It was very open. You could do this, touch this, something would happen. And I feel like, uh, with mid season event, it was a little bit more on like a track. It seemed to me personally, but I felt like I overthought it because I was thinking from before and I was like, what do I need to do? What do I pick up? Like, what do I touch? And was there well, things that we missed? Yeah. I mean, here, here's the thing that, that that's, I can kind of answer and I kind of don't want to answer it Okay. because nothing I can say now, I can make shit up right now and tell you, Oh my God, <laughs> you guys miss this. You miss this, you miss this. I can tell you, that it's not so much about different tracks, meaning that if you would have done this, we would have taken you into this room and done this. But what I can tell you is, is that every single interaction that you have, you can change that interaction. Meaning that, that let's say that five people go through and they have the same five monologues being given to them, the same interactions, how you react and how you talk will change the interaction you get. And so if you, you know, if you move across five different characters and you choose a different interaction, you would have a completely different monologue, thus new story points, thus lines that, that maybe weren't connected would have been connected. Um, as it relates to actual rooms, yeah, there were, I mean, there were, there were definite scenes that Clint had that were never read. Um, I think that we were both, everyone was kind of shocked that um, – the willingness uh, <laughs> to, to do things. And, and it's, you know, it, it, we learned a lot. We, we learned a lot from this experience because I, I talked about it in the interview we did, but um, there was something that, that we 
asks people to do when they first came in, uh, I think about six groups. We didn't do it every night. We only did it a few times. About the phone. Oh, um, I got the phone. There was, a whole <laughs> scene, there was a whole scene that I didn't think anyone was going to do that. I mean, honestly, I don't think Clint or I at that point thought this was going to happen. But after you rehearse it and do it six or seven times and people do it, you never do that scene. It never gets enacted. So, you know, you're three days in the you're three days in the run and it's never been done. When someone says no, it, it, it kind of stops things. Everyone looks around and say, oh, shit, <laughs> we've never done this. What, what are we supposed to do right now? So I think we learned a lot in this about um, – about that that was probably my biggest cringe moment of, of this experience this time was some of those scenes that we should have been ready to do it should have been there were never enacted and i get yeah. some i uh, no go ahead then. go ahead no i was just gonna say and, this, and we talked about this a little bit before but that was that was part of what it is that we had three days to workshop dialing in people's comfort level and with tension and you have fear it's a little bit different than your comfort level versus on the scale of comfort that we were taking with your comfort with your own morality and stuff like that. And so the wild pendulum shift between different people was all over the place. And so we thought we, we, we were trying to dial it in to be ready for everything, but I don't think we were quite as ready that some people would do absolutely nothing and some people would do everything and more. And so some of that, (laughs) threw us off with only three days to dial it in and with more time obviously it, it could have been factored a little bit better well i mean with tension it was four three weekends of test runs and then yeah. 12 weekends of being open so we, we had that together there was run. there would be not even i mean we, we did run one through prior to the thing actually opening and then that was it and then it was there was no breaks it was every half hour uh you know straight through so it was hard to course correct on on certain things yes um and and i think this was another it, it's one of the problems with with i think doing this and kind of learning it, and tickets are not cheap. Cheap. well yeah. tickets we're gonna say tickets aren't cheap no one made money on this and i think that's one of the biggest i saw i saw some people complaining about how can they expect people to afford this well we hope this isn't for everyone. It's not. And, and we understand that, that we may have alienated a large percentage of the audience that would want to come to this. But the reality is you just got to do do it in your head. If there's if there's 45 to 50 actors and there's 10 to 12 crew members and there's location and there's police and there's medics and there's insurance. You gotta there's alcohol. Put, there's there's alcohol. you, you got to put that into context of what it would cost to pull these things off. Exactly. So for us, we were, I guess, the, the mid-season event was always a – the idea of it was to say to the people that have been following this ARG for the better part of a year, here you go. Here's something while for you, you wait, for, for you. And it ended up enraging a lot of people, which was, and, and honestly, you, you ask if there's any, it affected Clint and I. I think that there was a, a few weeks after the event that it, there was a, I don't want to say depression, but what we hoped would have been a, hey, here's something cool while you guys wait for what we have planned. And what we have planned is, is, is much grander than Ascension. It's much bigger than that. Uh, for the finale, and I think that maybe in retrospect we should not have done the midseason, because I think people went into it all with the idea of, oh, this is going to be ascension, this is going to be ascension, and that wasn't same scale, this is going to yeah. be the same thing, uh, yeah. And, and, and it, and it wasn't. Ahead. That was never expectations. Our expectations have been the hardest part of lust, and broadcasting where your expectations should be and what we what's being delivered versus your expectations has been hard, and part of it is because of the excitement and the involvement of the community that they sometimes get ahead of what we're actually saying is going down versus what has been the hype of what is going down. And I'm not talking good or bad. I'm just talking about the expectations of what is actually going to be there. And the community will will, will create a, a tail that chases itself, that that's, kicks up dust, and all of a sudden, um, I'm looking and I'm going, wait, they, they think this is going on, and, and we haven't said that, but one person says it to another person, says it to another person, and then it becomes a fact within the community. And and a little bit, you know, there's only so many hours in the day and so many of us that that we're just trying to put on the thing, not chase the expectation. And that, that happens. And, and all this isn't us complaining. It's just just things that we learn to do better next time. That's what this is. And this is part of the learning curve. Yeah, I think we learned, that for me as a for me as someone that, that, that loves this medium, I think I learned more doing Lust than I did doing Ascension. 
because I think absolutely, and I think this this also happens is that um, we sometimes we set a, a high bar. We have set a high bar for ourselves. Also, that that yeah. ascension. You know, we came out guns blazing. And we had a lot of money, and we tried to do something that was a huge scale. We didn't want to make a little arty thing. We wanted to make something huge. And so when we did Lust, the same idea applied. We're going to do something huge. We're going to double down and do something bigger. But we knew to get to that point, it was going to take us it, – it, it, it was going to take us a while to get to that point. And I think that – And our you know, resources the, the, were a little more stretched than they were for, for well, yeah. attention. Well, yeah. And I think that the mid-season event, you got to think about it, 95% of the audience, 95% are not ARGers. 5% come in ARG. And, you know, let's, let's just say, am I, am I right at it, Clint, or is it more? Uh, yeah, I think that's right. That's I, wild. And so we're having to play to, you know, literal, like, celebrities that are coming through that were told about this five seconds before they showed up and play to people who have given up, you know, so much of their day to – every day of our plot that that's 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 another learning curve that we're we're still processing well that's difficult and and i will tell you one thing i loved mid-season i thought it was amazing i had so much fun i personally we enjoyed the hell out of it it was so good and we uh, we're proud of it we loved it you know yeah i mean i think that's it is that i'm I'm extremely proud of it And, and when you walk in, just when you when you walk in, you see everything in the characters and, and the colors and the costumes. I, I'm 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 fucking ecstatic by what we were able to accomplish, you know. And that, that's the thing that as a filmmaker, you know, I I I always did. I actually wrote a blog about this with Mother's Day, and I, I wanted to do it with tension, and I decided not to or lust. But when you take ten critics and you see five of the most scathing, horrible reviews. This is the worst thing ever. I will never go back to one of their events. I hated every second of it. And then you put it to a five other one, which, which is, this is groundbreaking. This is amazing. This is blah, blah, blah. And you realize that, you know, I would rather have something that was ultimately polarizing than it was a, a collective shrug. And I think that, that for us, you know, obviously you wish everyone loved what you did, but I would rather do something that was polarizing mm-hmm. than I, that I, that I literally elicited hate out of somebody than I would be that was just like a meh, whatever. Definitely. And so I think that to me, you know, while I, I really wished that people would love it, I'm okay with the polarization of utter hate from what we did. Um, so, you know, it, we learned a lot. Like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a learning thing, and, and what we learn will be applied to the finale that, that, that will be more akin to Ascension, I think. That's awesome. Um, I, I remember from the, the haunting article that you did, we just talked about a little earlier where you mentioned how you didn't expect so many people to be uh, so forward or willing to do whatever was asked of them. And I guess just from a different perspective, from my perspective, I went in specifically saying, I'm not going to let them see me, you know, uh, flustered. I'm going to do whatever the fuck is asked of me because that's how I'm going to show my, I guess, like my power or whatever. And um, I personally felt so many kinds of emotions. I thought it was wonderful. I felt uncomfortable. I felt uh, empowered. I felt desired. I felt... Um, confused. Well, I, I appreciate you saying that. I mean, I yeah. think you get what you put in, and Definitely. I think that if you come in, and, and Clint, Clint, I've talked about this quite a bit, is that people sometimes go in with what they hope it to be, and they judge it in their head of what they hope it will be. Yeah, as and opposed to what it is. Exactly, as opposed to what it is. And I think that um, something that was kind of crazy that I wasn't expecting is a lot of people that that had never, you know, never been to tension or is not part of the ARG walked away with a very, very different um, experience than those that, that actually were with the ARG. And I think, I, and I understand that completely, when in the ARG, you spend hundreds of hours dissecting and, and pontificating and talking and, 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 and thinking about how, how, how outrageous it's going to be, or, you know, and the eggplant emojis left to <laughs> <laughs> No, I literally went, so real quick, because you brought up eggplant emojis, Clint, 
I went in. I just mean that as you know the expectation of what's going to be. No, there. well, I went in. Sorry, go ahead. No, I I went in. Um, and I personally like I didn't get a lot of backstory. I got nothing but like sexual conversation, and I in my head convinced myself was like this is what I get for putting so many emojis. Like <laughs> this is what I get. <laughs> but it was so much fun. I mean, it was it was uh. It was you know, one of amazing. my favorite shocking things about this, again, one of these things that you learn and you don't, uh, you don't, you can't plan for is, and I remember this when I did Blackout a lot, because I remember the first time I ever did Blackout, there was so many rumors and lore in, in like this, these, these things that I'd heard. And then you go to it and I realized that I think, and, and by the way, I'm a huge fan of Blackout. I love what these guys do. But to me, the lore was more horrific than what was actually happening. And I was at a party right after we did Lust. I think it was the two weeks after Lust ended, there was a New Year's Eve party. And I went to it. As I walked in, I all the, it was like literally something out of the movie. Everyone turned and looked at me. <laughs> and I started hearing what they heard I did versus what we really did. And I kind of wanted to correct them, but then I was like, you know what? The lore is kind of awesome. Let them think that that's what really happened. Uh, which was which was funny because, again, now what happens is there's like a snowball effect. One person leaves and, and tells a story. And then that story gets told to somebody else, but they add a little bit to it. And, and the next thing you know is these stories have no bearing to anything that actually happened in those walls. But it, it's, it's, uh, it's hilarious to, to hear them and actually see it in real time occurring with, with my own friends, people that I know. Yeah. About, it makes did you really do yeah, it makes for interesting yeah, conversation when we're at parties and people come up to us and they're like, so we heard lust, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> hey, guys, can you hold on? I'm so sorry. Clint, I'll be right back. Someone, okay. someone keeps calling number block number one. Oh, God. Hello? 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 Oh, God. Oh, is this Clint? Hold on. You good? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. What is happening? Um, uh, nothing. We'll just keep going. <laughs> just ignore that. Uh, um, so, yeah. So, we're at the parties, and, and these rumors come up, and they'll be like, so, uh, we heard that blah, blah, blah. There'll be a tenth of that, and you just kind of have to shrug and keep going. Okay, sorry, <laughs> no, you're good. Um, so, what are some of the crazier things that you saw that maybe you didn't expect people to do or to happen? Um, the, the people that, the people well, that I don't would, get, don't, don't be careful when I answer this. <laughs> oh my God. The people that would do things were not what you expected. And the people that wouldn't were, was the exact opposite. So you'd be like, all right, this guy's going through, we know where it's going to happen. And we, and we, we understand this character. We understand what track it's going to be on. And then all of a sudden you have an, you know, a 70 year old man who <laughs> you're, you're a little like careful of because he's he's so out there and willing to, to participate in a big way is, is all I'm going to say about that and, and the exact opposite somebody will come through and look completely free and open and then you know is, is just not wanting to participate in certain things at all so that was shocking you never know what you're going to get you can't judge a book by its cover <laughs> um I I guess I mean I, I talked to Clint about this but the the biggest moment for me was I, I mean, I got down to, of course, nice minimal clothing, and um, I expected it, though. I was like, whatever, I don't care. I feel great. I look great, whatever. And, of course, all the amazing actors were, like, you know, touching on me, whatever. And um, so I felt wonderful. I wasn't even self-conscious or anything. And um, when I realized the masks is what really blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you mean, the masks? Uh, I mean, uh, what do I mean, Darren? I mean, how did it feel being able to experience uh, lust up close? Uh, Versus screen. Uh, oh, right. Uh, well, uh, yeah. go ahead, <laughs> it was terrifying. It was visceral. It was surreal. Mm -hmm. Like, we had our own experience there, and, you know, there's there's other things that we have to make sure that are in play, that we're already, there's already pressure points, and then there's seeing it happen before you. It was terrifying. 
terrifying. <laughs> it was terrifying. Well, I think it's terrifying because there's so many balls that are being juggled at any given. That's a really horrible thing to say for lust balls. <laughs> being juggled, but there's, there's a, there were so many things. So not only, not only are we monitoring safety, we have earpieces in, and there's constant chatter going in constantly on that. Um, you know, from from drivers to security people. So one of the things, like every ever so often, I would like I don't know, it was every five or seven minutes, they had to report security. Like, where are the people? Is everyone? I mean, it was so you're hearing constant communications, and you're trying to watch as things are going on. And again, because unlike Ascension, Ascension had a huge backstage area, huge. They, they, you know, there were there were there were trap doors and walls that would move that people right. would hide. There was nothing like that here, so we would have to also pay attention at all times to not disrupt scenes. Yet we'd have to that, be able to move in between them effortlessly, effortlessly. That that was, you know, that's a great point that that you bring up because there was nowhere to hide for us, for the actors, for anything. So everything had to fire at a hundred percent the entire time. And that's that's exhausting for everyone. Uh, I, I thought it was genius. I mean, I thought it was so clever from my perspective. And it literally was actually, I would say, my favorite thing out of all of it, uh, surprisingly, because it literally blew my fucking mind. <laughs> um, I could I, not. I, thank you. I mean, it's, it's something that I think you take pride in. It, it's so cool. Like, I, why I love doing movies is I, I love the trickery and artistry to convince an audience of things to to be able to do magic tricks basically and i think it's so much cooler to do it live and in person and hopefully not be able to break uh the story or narrative or illusion that's being told in this and so to me the choreography is always the best part and my favorite part i mean when you go back and look at ascension specifically for people that came through multiple times the choreography of sabrina being able to effortlessly, effort, there's a word I can't say it, effortlessly, <laughs> go through so first, first time and second timers and be able to be literally that she couldn't be 20 seconds off. If she was 20 seconds off, it would cause a disruption and, and, and literally cause a backup of, of, you know, people waiting. And so to me, that's my favorite part of being able to do this. Yeah, she was, uh, I ended up <clears throat> with Sabrina as my host and I, I kind of paid for it. <laughs> And um, it was also one of my other favorite parts. I mean, right away I walked in and I was, she just looked at me a certain way and I was like, yeah, it's going to be a fun night. <laughs> it's going to be real rough. And uh, sure enough, I mean, I ended up with her as my uh, partner uh, in the dining room. I mean, I ended up with the phone call thing. It was so funny. I mean, they dialed <clears throat> on my phone and they ended up dialing Mark and he knew where I was and he answered on speaker and he's like, are you dead yet? And everyone just kind of like looked at us, especially those that haven't done it. And we're just kind of like, well, what are, what are we in for? You know what I mean? Like what's happening? And um, there was just so many little things that I personally took away from that I thought were amazing. And uh, I, as soon as I, every time, but as soon as I walked out, I literally wish I could have gone right back in because it's something that you never want to uh, leave from. And I always want more so again I mean I think it's incredible the way that you all put it together especially with such short amount of time and I know you all say of course you learned so many things from it but I also think you deserve uh to pat yourselves definitely on the back and a lot of credit because it was a, an amazing event I think uh well thank you I mean it, it, for us it's, it's about onward and moving forward I think that for us um our eye is on something much bigger, and I think that's where uh, where we're trying to head. Is that I don't want Absolutely. this to be a side, I don't want this to be a side hustle, and I don't want to support my immersive theater habit with a movie by, by being a movie director, and that's what it is right now. It's that, yeah, and I think that's another thing that people don't don't maybe quite understand is that um, we are constantly with the hustle on a, 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 a ton of other projects and things pulling us in different directions, and we give 100% to this all the time, and that's our main focus, but we are constantly pulled in different directions, and that's, that's the end game is to, to take that away and make make our side hustle our main hustle. Or, yeah, and that's, you know, and, and I think that that's, uh, I think that's our, our task in, this year is, is how do we outdo ourselves um, with, you know, ascension with what we're going to do with lust, knowing that to sustain what we're doing with lust, we have to do other things. Um, and you know, that's, uh, it's, it's one of those things that I think we're still trying to figure out. 
That's awesome. So another quick question, I know we have to wrap up here soon, but what advice would you give people who are looking to jump into this, who have no idea what this is? Uh, what would you, I guess, um, let them know to let them know to join with us? Dive in. Yeah, it's never too late. Well, that's, I think, the, the misconception about what this is, is it, and I, this is, I, again, I, I hate to repeat some things I've maybe been said before, but, um, you know, I, I didn't know you, uh, Kristen, 10 years ago. I, I didn't. I, I know you, you know, maybe, and I, by the way, that's so insane that, that you actually know Repo, and I'm very excited by that. <laughs> no, <But that's... laughs> I, I, uh, I, I don't, I didn't know Clint when, when he was five years old, but I met Clint, I met you, and we have a relationship based on now. So everything that happened before and everything that will happen after we stop knowing each other doesn't change the now. And I think that with the ARG, the way that we're trying to construct it is, it's, by, it's based on the now. You can jump in, and yes, you will, you will have to learn things about the past to understand things that are happening now however though in the same way that when you meet somebody like after i knew clint for a few years i, I knew about things that happened in his past and it's the same way with the arg i think that there is a concern that when people jump in that it, it's it's there's it's too going to be too confusing or too dense um but in the same way that they kind of create soap operas that you know, if, if you want to watch Days of Our Lives and you want to jump in now, you don't need to go back you to don't the need 1980s. The 40 years, yeah. yeah, you don't have to go back to the 1980s and, and realize it. Um, so that's, it, it's, it, in the very end, it's about a sense of community. It's what I believe that, and this is where it started with Repo. It started with Repo, carried over to Devil's Carnival, and now it's become more me, which is more macabre and dark. Uh, with, with tension, which is how do you create a narrative which is based around a community? And when we at Repo, and I think that why Repo has succeeded uh, is a cult kind of thing. It's not because the movie's good. It's not because, you know, the acting is stellar and the music is, is, is really catchy, which I think it is all of those. It is. <laughs> I think it's because the community, it, it became something about the community. And when you make a project about a, a group of people, and you make it f about them, it will always stand the test of time. And so I think for, for us, it's the ARG is about the community. It is about giving people a congregational point with with a like-minded thing to discuss and talk about. And that like-minded thing to talk about and discuss is the narrative. But it's it's about them. It's about you. And I think to to me that's the kind of narratives I want to do. Something that's not what I think is cool anymore. But what can garner a community around it? I think that's uh, the my favorite thing, of course, of all of this is the community and the fact that. I mean, you all know they've done wonderful things for me, you know, and um, I feel, especially with you two, it sounds weird. I mean, we've met maybe once technically and um, or twice kind of, <laughs> but um, I feel like you all know me so very well, maybe more than some of my family members. And that's because we all spend so much time on this. And I think a lot of us are so dedicated to this and what this is. And I always ex try to explain that to people because of course they're going going to see the superficial like oh my gosh you know it's creepy did you get kidnapped whatever but they don't see uh, the actual underlying community portion of it which I think is so important and I think that's the coolest thing to say you know obviously Darren I mean I've admired your stuff for so long now and it blew my mind of course when I found out you were behind tension but I think it's so cool to me that I can say oh my gosh you know i get to actually be a part of something that you all have created i get to ha put my say in something and maybe that'll go somewhere else and i think that's the the best thing about this whole thing really well thank uh, you i mean thank you very much uh it's it, i think the hardest part about what we're doing is, is not the writing and the permitting and the, all that which which is extremely time consuming and difficult, I think it comes down to the emotional attachment. Lust, yeah, it's what you lust after, it's sexually, it's power, it's all of that. But it, it's also for us, it, it's I I'm gonna just have to say this without sounding completely cheese ball. <laughs> we care so it, I, I feel and I think Clint feels and those that are involved feel there's an attachment, unlike any other thing that I can articulate to the people in the ARG playing it. Because while we sit behind a curtain that you don't talk to or converse with, I think you're the second person this year that we've actually spoken to besides haunting, um, we don't exist. You guys, however, we're watching everything. Everything that you're doing, we watch and we see. So there is an attachment that you don't have, that you don't see, that we feel. So, and again, I think what makes it hard is, is when you do an immersive experience, 
I remember this last year. I talked to Clint about it. I would watch Instagram and I would see everyone gathered together at the Escondite or something like that. And I got jealous. I was like, I feel like I know these people. I want to go have a beer with them. I want to hang out with them. And you can't. There's there's um, there's a wall there. Yeah. And so what's crazy is, is that unlike a Saw movie where I don't know the audience, I don't know the people, I don't know whatever, I feel and there feels to be a connection between creator and audience member unlike anything I've ever experienced before. And it puts in this weird space, which I can't even articulate. Maybe Clint could do a better job. Uh, nope. You gone? No, no, I'm here. I'm here. Uh, no, everything you're saying is real. And it's a little different for me because I interact with everyone through character. So it's even a different hyper surreal where is the line thing. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, we there's no lines. What are those? We don't have time for those. Yeah. yeah. So it's a little like what Darren said, but also being a schizophrenic at the same time. <laughs> All I ask, and this is my my biggest desire and my dream, is that if this is ever over, we all have a big dinner together <laughs> and everyone hang Bell. out at Taco Bell, please. <laughs> my my dreams will come true. <laughs> Uh, we will all we will all sit down for Taco Bell and uh, yes. and uh, you can ask whatever questions then that you want without worrying about being uh, told no. <laughs> I'm I'm ready for the Taco Bell and the puppy experience and um, yeah, it's gonna be great. <laughs> so um, I know you all mentioned having big plans for 2018. Is there um, anything you can kind of elaborate on, or is that still real? sketchy too well, <laughs> this is one of the frustrations i think as a as, as an artist and this this is from anyone this is from writers or directors or producers the world doesn't work at the time frame that you want it to um there's been something that we thought we were gonna be able to announce months and months and months ago uh that we can't and it's it's not up to us when we can announce it so it's it's this really frustrating thing because there's something really exciting that we're all really excited to talk about but we can't so the answer is, no, we can't say it, but I can tell you that we're excited about something. That's awesome. And when you hear about it, you'll be excited, too. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's not something we can, we can talk about. Um, you know, what I can it's, say is, it, you know, here's something I will say about the future. Um, I mentioned to you earlier that there's a lot of learning in this, and there's a lot of course correcting. Uh, if you went to the first show of Ascension, and then you went to the last show of Ascension, uh, it, it became infinitely a different beast, a better, darker, more macabre, more well-oiled machine. The same is going to happen with, with the experiences and the way that even how the ARG works and how we work with it. Um, there's going to be changes. And changes are coming. Uh, it might take a moment to get used to, but I think at yeah. the very end, what will end up happening is it will f we will have an ability to sustain ourselves uh, will require change from the users, the, the people that are playing with us. Um, but I think in the very end, it'll be more dynamic, more engaging, and allow us to do more cool things. Yeah, a little bit of a retool is coming. And um, I think I'll be a little pushback at first, but at the end, I think everyone will realize it's for the best and that the uh, uh, quality over quantity is, is the big game there. Yeah. Well, I can tell um, you we're excited, and I... I know personally a lot of us will definitely follow through with everything that you all put together because, I mean, we have a problem. I mean, obviously, I, we spend so much time on this, and it's such a cool thing. And I am really excited and look forward to my, my yearly momcations having all uh, kinds of fun stuff go on in those walls. Well, I think well, awesome. I'll just end this by saying, you know, fans, uh, thank you for the people that are – uh, still following along and still caring and still, uh, you know, t time is the one thing that I don't have in my life. I understand how valuable time is. So the, the time, yeah. So time that they yeah. So when you when you look at the time that, that is being put into this thing from from everybody, uh, it's a humbling thing. Um, it really and I think is. that it does not go unseen. So yes, yeah, so I'm just gonna jump in, and that's what I was gonna say is just thank you to everyone. You know, time is your currency and and your passion and when you love, even when you hate us, you know, <laughs> just thank you for, for everything. And, and we couldn't do it. You guys are our fuel and keep us going when, when we're tired and exhausted and just don't know where to go next because 
the thought of pushing that that rock up the hill again and, and we see something that people loved it or people you know are engaging and it, it fuels us on so yes i agree 100%. that's amazing uh so my last question is i want to know when clint's getting a tension tattoo because i mean darren and i we're we're on that bus like, already i have like 50 it's just none of them are any place that anyone can actually <laughs> see them so it's already happened in a big way <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Clint, it's, it, he was, we were supposed to get it at South by Southwest, and Clint it ended up saying no at the very last second, and it was the most enraging. Uh, I, did not, I did not. I did you not. You absolutely did. I did not. I, I remember getting drunk, and if you remember, <laughs> I was too drunk to even get a tattoo, so that's a huge difference. Not my fault. Yeah, it must I be no Friday control over that. Right, because that's yeah. what it is. All right, Kristen, thank you so much. <laughs> thank uh, you, guys. And uh, I just want to apologize now. Uh, in advance and just thank that apology for later you already know i'm a happy big... birthday thank you for spending my birthday with me uh again I, I appreciate you. you all so much and i'm excited for what's to come so thank you guys so much y'all have a good one thank you bye, bye. Hi guys, this is Kristen. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. We do have way more in store for you all in the future. I did just want to mention that after this interview, a lot of sketchiness happened. Uh, If you notice, there's a portion in the middle where Darren received a blocked call. And it turns out I received a phone call shortly with a no caller ID after recording this interview from Morgan of the BOS, who asked me uh, if I knew who called and if I wanted to listen to it. The actual caller on the other line was speaking to Darren in an angry voice and he basically stated uh, what they're doing and Darren mentioned, you know, we're talking to her right now and this gentleman said, well, Clint is on script but you're not, asshole. Meaning this whole interview is a sham and we still know nothing about the creators or what their intentions are with all of us or with the experiences themselves. Uh, if you're interested in joining us and trying to figure it out, please do so at thelustexperience.com. Uh, you can also message me via our Facebook and I'd be more than happy to get you started. See you all soon.